A new Norwegian research project called CarboFertil is investigating over the next three years how to create a biochar-based fertilizer which can both provide plants with their growing needs while also increasing the amount of carbon which can be stored in the soil. Biochar is a carbon-rich material which is formed by heating biomass in the absence of oxygen. Biochar looks a little bit like charcoal powder, but instead of burning it in your barbecue, you add it to your soil, where it can provide a number of environmental benefits. Perhaps the most unique property of biochar is its enhanced resistance to biological degradation. Unlike wood or straw, bacteria and fungi have a harder time eating and metabolizing biochar. And because it doesn't get eaten, it ends up staying around for a long time. This curious fact has led soil scientists in the last decades to propose that by adding biochar to agricultural soils, we could lock up large amounts of carbon over time, which would reduce the amount of CO2 that would otherwise be released into the atmosphere. While a lot of research on biochar has been done in the last decade, implementation and commercial development is still lagging behind. In Norway, biochar production is in its infancy, with only a few pilot projects existing. More work needs to be done to communicate to others outside the research community about the benefits of biochar, so that we can translate theory into practice. For this reason, a group from Norway, including business people and farmers, joined Carbofertil researchers from Nibio and Sintef on a study tour to Austria in June 2018 to visit a number of innovative biochar plants, which are producing biochar and leading the way in Europe to the development of new biochar-based agricultural products. The study tour was organised by the International Biochar Initiative and was hosted in Austria by Gerard Dunst and his team from Sonnenerde, which is a family-run company which produces a wide range of soil and compost products. Gerald has been one of the pioneers of biochar innovation in Europe and was keen to show the visitors his special blend of biochar-rich compost. So this looks like completely the original. This was for me very important to have really the same. And also very important was to have the same microorganism population inside. And it takes me six years of experiments. His son Dominic is now following in his footsteps and has started a company called Charline, which is developing a line of biochar products specially formulated for adding to animal feed. According to Dominic, the farmers who are testing their products are getting positive results, including reduced incidence of diarrhea and reduced signs of stress. Another benefit of the biochar being added to the animal feed is that the biochar comes out into the field as part of the manure, and therefore the farmer doesn't need to do extra work to spread the biochar. For the Norwegian companies who are looking to invest, the visit to two pyrolysis plants was a valuable experience to see how these plants operate in practice, what the outputs are, and what it costs to run in terms of electricity and labour. One of the plants was a pyrate machine which was installed at the composting facility to Sananda, and the other was a gasification plant which operated almost unmanned and produced electricity and about 10% yield of biochar. Among the Norwegian participants who attended the study tour was a Norwegian company, Oplandske Bioenergy, who in the process of investigating prolysis and biochar as a possible technology which can provide carbon negative heat solutions for their customers. Det som gör biokull eh uh, intressant eller som gör Oplandske tillpassa biokull då. Det är ju att när du producerar biokull så har du också en restvärme og vi er da plassert i verdikjeden så at vi klarer å utnytte den restvarmen med da å bruke det inn i våre nett eller til våre, våre kunder. I tillegg så har vi jo en eiermasse med gardbrukere og skogeiere og energiselskap som også har en interesse i forhold til å gjøre noe for klima. Så hvis vi klarer å, å få butikk ut av å gjøre noe bra for klima, da, da er vi godt plassert. Participants in the study tour were also taken to visit two farms, 
which are participating in the Kandoff Eco Region Humus Program. The program pays farmers for implementing a number of sustainable farming practices which have been known to capture and store more carbon in the soil. This captured carbon is then sold to businesses as a carbon credit, whereby the business is able to offset their own CO2 emissions. While the payment for carbon might be what get farmers initially interested to join, the improvements that the carbon is making to their soil and for crop health over time seems to be what is keeping them in it for the long term. This creates a virtuous circle where greater soil carbon leads to increased farm income and healthier crops. The Carbofertil project is financed by the Norwegian Research Council's BNO program. If you'd like to keep updated on the progress of the research in our project, please visit our website at the link below.